Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here. And last night, Annie and I got to go see Billy Strings in Philly. And it made me so happy to see Bluegrass just embraced the way it was last night. Um, thank you to everyone out there that uh, came and said hi. Uh, means the world to me. You guys know that. And it inspired me to make this video. Perhaps you don't know this, but of all the things that have made a substantial impact on my life, if I had to choose one genre, one sound to listen to on my last days here, it would be bluegrass gospel music. That is, in the deepest part of my soul, the thing that touched me the most, that I love and cherish more than anything. And the band and album that did it will also probably surprise you. It is Old and In The Way. Now, if you don't know about Old and In The Way, it is, for lack of a better word, a bluegrass supergroup from the early 70s uh, that basically made a, a couple live recordings and, that, and that's it. There's no video, okay? And I consider them to be one thing. So I've picked out two songs, two songs that I want to showcase. One is one that features Jerry Garcia singing and leading, leading the band vocally. Now, a lot of you that know this channel know that I recently got into the dead. So it might surprise you to find that uh, I have loved Jerry Garcia and he's meant something to me for a very long time, for decades. Um, and a lot of it, frankly, is because bluegrass, to use Bob Weir's terminology, is a very strict idiom. It, its intention is so drastically different than what you would hear Jerry play with the dead. I mean, these are very well-arranged, thought-out, purposeful, specific parts um, uh, that are... I mean, it's old-time music. There's a certain kind of respect there when you're playing these old bluegrass gospel songs. It's just a thing, man. And so you got Jerry Garcia on banjo and singing Banjo Jerry. Banjo Jerry, which sounds nothing like Guitar Jerry. And it is why I preach in my courses and everything about triads, 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 and connecting melodies with triads, or triads with melodies. Because that's what you hear in this music, and that's what you hear Jerry do. You can, you can, if you get into this, and then you go to the dead, you, you see the roadmap. You can visually see it. Okay, then we have David Grisman. We all know David Grisman, one of the best mando players of all time, Tremendous vocalist in his own right. Now, you have John Kahn, the mule on bass. John Kahn might be my favorite stand-up bass player. Not because of his flashiness or anything, or, or, or really, uh, uh, you know, things that stand out. No, it's because he has a sense of dynamic and push and note duration, which... Literally, in my opinion, is, is, is perfect. He's almost a conduit for the pulse of this genre. I mean, it is so tasteful. It is so tasteful. And he saves, and I'll point this out, he saves his little pieces of inversions for the most poignant points and then basically doesn't mention them again. A true master. Vassar Clements, who is my favorite improviser of all time, any genre, any instrument, Vassar is the man. And then Peter Rowan, who's infamous in his own right, leading the charge vocally and doing that perfect mix of the strumming acoustic guitar, you know very light and the all the voice led little pickup parts that bring it all together so I'm gonna play a couple for you the two songs that I've chosen well I'm just gonna start with the first one is Angel Band 
This is a classic gospel hymn, right? Uh, there is no original version that, that I, I know a recording of. But check this out. Just take it in. Forget about how beautiful and gorgeous it is. Do you hear how well they play together and how well arranged it is? This is them mixing on the fly. I mean, it, you know, this is all, all acoustic, right? It is, it is every single time there's a, there's a gap where the sound begins to dissipate from the high instruments, you have John Kahn, boom, boom, push. And the duration of those notes, as soon as that starts to dissipate, right, it gets picked up by a mandolin, it gets pushed through by the guitar, and then Vassar just spreads it on the top, right? And you hear Vassar in the back doing little melody lines way back from the microphone, just blending it all together. And then when he's got to pull the string, he just leans forward and pulls the string. It is unbelievable. Now, how great does Jerry sound singing this song? You can tell he loves this music. And so now when I go back and I play this and I hear it, like, man, it makes you want to go listen to Broke Down Palace, right? It's that I loved, I loved it. I've, I've loved him for so long, just in a different way. Um, so this is in B flat. It's a one, four, five, except two very cool things happen. It's a one. It, first of all, it's in three, four. So one, two, three. It's like a waltz, right? Now you could do it with a capo on the third fret and do a G shape, or you could just do it in G like a lot of bands do. But it's one. One dominant seven, right? So this becomes a functioning dominant over to four, one, That's the little voice leading part I'm telling you about. When the chorus comes around, the, the double tag, instead of just doing the one to one dominant seven, it goes one and then puts that major third, right, in the bass and plays that D diminished chord, right, to then lead to four. This is what I mean about bluegrass changing my life. This is a very specific example. I never knew what to do with the diminished chord. What is the diminished chord do? What is the diminished chord creates the function of a dominant seventh chord. It is the three, five, and seven of a dominant seventh chord. That's it. Let me say it again. A dominant seventh chord is one, 
major third, fifth, flat seven. Right? You can look at it like this little cluster. One, flat seven, three, five. If you just remove the bass note, that's a diminished triad. So all John Kahn is doing here is grabbing that third, right, that D of B flat seven and putting it in the bass and saving that voice leading for the double tag makes it pop, man. That's what I'm talking about. Simple things, profound execution. I know it might seem like I'm rambling here. Do this. Use this. Take it forever. It's awesome. And now listen to Vassar over here. So forget about his finesse and touch and all, and all of that. When I mean learn the melody to every song that you play, this is a bluegrass thing. This is an old country thing. When you take a lead, everybody takes a turn with the melody. And what's the key thing that happens here? Again, we're B flat, you hear him. Here, let's just go back, we'll go back. for the fifth. Right? B flat major pentatonic. Little bluesy inflection there. Oh, sorry. Lost track of where it was in there. So again, it's just B flat major, right? We're staying one, two, three, five, six for the whole melody with just touches of flavor in there. But then what happens when it comes around? What was that? Flat seven. Hammering that chord tone from B flat major goes to B flat seven. This is what I mean about the melody connecting the harmony. When you learn the melody to every tune, you'll make the little connections. I knew something happened there. I knew that note was significant. What was it? He, for the first time, left B flat major pentatonic to play that flat seven accentuated the change from B flat to B flat seven, which, cause that flat seven is gonna resolve down to the third of the four chord. You with me? You with me? All right, next one. And this is my favorite tune of all time probably uh, in this genre. This is Lost. This is a, a tremendous tune on so many levels. And I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm gonna play this, and then I'm gonna play the original version written by Buzz Busby, which I, I looked up the lyrics, and I just, I, I never thought to figure out who wrote this song. And there's a recording of it from Whatever year this is, it just says the, the rarest version on the Jiffy label. So this is probably my, my favorite bluegrass song. And what's so cool about it is that it changes tempos and time signatures. It starts fast in 4-4, and then its chorus, if you will, is a half-time waltz in a different key. Jerry? Ever since you turned me down, all I do is round, round. 
walking. I don't care what happens to me. My heart was young and gay till the day you went away. Now life here means nothing to me. That is so bitchin'. That is so incredibly well-performed and written and just cool. Perfect melody, perfect... I mean, it, it, it goes to a halftime waltz for the chorus, and, and it has a, a harmonic minor part to it. It's nuts. Okay. Also, starting in B-flat. So you go... Down to your six, so one... Six... Five, so F, B flat, right? So Jerry. See, way different than guitar Jerry, right? It's a it's a different thing. That is that is percussive triads till the cows come home. flat again three four so one two three four chord one and then G minor D7 G minor and the melody right So good. That jump by Vassar. Your homework is to go to listen to this stuff. But now we're going to do the thing I've been waiting for this whole video. For those of you that have stuck with me, Thank you. It means a lot. I know this is a very personal rambling style video, but this is Buzz Busby Lost. First version. I don't know the year. Let's hit the button. Starts on the chorus and we're in a different key.
hear that? What a run. Oh my God, it's so, it's like a, a funeral dirge kind of thing. Um, the tempo just slowing down and, and, and so this is in a different key. So it's in D, so you got D and G and then that other part is B minor, F sharp seven, B minor. Um, you know. Wild, wild. And maybe I remembered the lyrics wrong, but. And it started with the, I'm gonna listen to that again. You know, these old records, when you hit the, the crackle and pops, like you gotta kinda like lean in and like really try to hear the room in there. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it meant something to you. I hope it turns you on to this style of music. Um, and perhaps if it's not your thing, I would implore you as just a consummate musician, someone who's always trying to get better, take it, take it to heart. These simple, profound tunes have incredible depth in them. If you learn this style of music, you will embrace melody. You will embrace, embrace using triads and connecting those triads with melody. You will, you will embrace dynamics. You will embrace the pulse in everything that you play because every instrument is the percussion, right? Um, I just love it to death. And I don't know what else to say. I love you all so much. Billy, thanks for an amazing night and inspiring me to uh, listen to this the whole ride home last night. Cheers.